Good evening, everyone. My name is Celestia Lambert, your ever-loving nerd. In today's video, uh, we're sticking with Ruby. And in today's video, we're actually going to be covering uh, the, uh, the openings. <clears throat> we're going to be watching them and discussing them. So let's go ahead and start the video. Starting with volume one. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. No, wait, I need to just do this. There we go, okay. Okay, good, we good. Okay, they see you as small and helpless. They see you as just a child. Surprised when they find out that a warrior will soon run wild. So, at the beginning of pretty much everything, Ruby was naive to the ways of the world, I suppose you could say. She wasn't really all that quote-unquote streetwise. Although, eventually, her teammates, Wise Blake and Yang, helped kind of, I guess, clue her in to the happenings of the world. Anyway, let's continue on. Prepare for your greatest moment. Prepare for your finest hour. Wait, hold on. Prepare for your greatest moment, prepare for your finest hour. The dream that you've always dreamed is suddenly about to flower. Uh, at this point in the song, it's basically kind of, I guess... It's kind of hyping the viewers up more than anything. Really. The first few lines of the song were more solemn slash melancholic. But from here on, it kind of, it kind of hypes you up, I guess. We are lightning, strength from the thunder. Wait, hold on. I think I must say something wrong. We are lightning, strength from the thunder, miracles of ancient wonder. Again, it's basically just continuously hyping the viewer up. So, not much more to say, really. This will be the day we uh this will be the day we've waited for. This will be the day we open up the door. 
is basically telling us that with Ruby and friends, their time has finally come. Like, their time to become huntress and huntresses in training, it's finally showed up. It, it's their time to shine, is basically what those two lines are saying. I don't want to hear your absolution. Hope you're ready for a revolution. I don't want to hear your absolution. Hope you're ready for a revolution. Welcome to a world of new solutions. Welcome to a world of bloody evolution. It, all that is basically saying that... You think you know everything about the world you're going into, you don't. So that's what we're here for. We're here to help prepare you for the rest of your life, basically. In time, your heart will open minds. A story will... Uh, hold on. In time, your heart will open minds. A story will be told. And victory is in a simple soul. Basically implies that... This whole series, really, is Ruby's story. This is her story, more than anything, from beginning to end. And we don't quite know how the story is going to turn out. Because it's still being told. But let's continue on, because that was only Volume 1's intro. We still have seven more to go. There's a point where it tips, there's a point where it breaks, there's a point where it bends, and a point we just can't take. In Volume 2 of Ruby, things started to get a little more stressful. For everyone, really. For Ruby, for Weiss, Blake, Yang, everyone. Things started to get just the tiniest bit more stressful. There's a line that will cross. There's a line that will cross and there's no return. There's, an, a, there's a time and a place, no bridges left to burn. Now I don't know what those second two lines mean. But I think that those first two lines 
there's a line that will cross and there's no return. I think that... Hold on. Actually, now that I really think about it, I don't quite know what that whole verse means. Honestly. We can't just wait with lives at stake until they think we're ready. Now that implies that things are starting to happen and that uh, the girls need to do something about it now and that they can't really wait for either permission from Ozpin or, as shown on the screen here, uh, orders from General Ironwood. Our enemies are gathering. The storm is growing deadly. That implies that the wrong type of people, or sorry, the wrong types of people, are just moving, just doing stuff in general. And that, as I said earlier, the girls and their friends can't really wait for, again, permission from Ospin or orders from General Ironwood, and they need to do something about it now. <clears throat> now it's time to say goodbye to the innocence of youth. Or, I think that's the line. Now it's time to say goodbye to the things we loved and the innocence of youth. Basically, now it's time to take the training wheels off, to put our training that we've received at Beacon to actual use out in the field. To move away from the school and start actually doing some good in the world. How the time seemed to fly from our carefree loves and the solitude and peace we always knew. Kinda just drives the point I just made home about how it's time to take off the training wheels and again start doing some actual good in the world. But as we'll see with the next intro, Volume 3's intro, that might not work out as well as they think. A uh, quick warning before we, like, fully get into Volume 3's intro. This volume is where... This volume is where Ruby started going a little dark. <clears throat> this volume is where Ruby started going a little dark. Not dark as in, like, color but more so as in, like, theme slash, uh, slash message. Basically, from Volume 3 on, 
no more kitty gloves. <laughs> no more no more training wheels, no more kitty gloves. This is where this is where stuff really started going down. Maybe reds like roses. Maybe it's the pool of blood the innocents will in, will lay in when, in the end, you fail to save them. Like I said, this this volume is where Ruby starts getting dark, <laughs> and that first verse really just kind of drives that point home. I'd say. Their dying eyes are wide and white like snow, and now they know the cost of trusting you is obliteration. That verse is... Although we didn't know it at the time, that verse is from the perspective of Salem, Cinder's boss. And she's talking to Ozpin in that verse. Actually, now that I think about it, this whole song, When It Falls, Volume 3's intro, this whole song is just Salem talking to... Ozpin about seeing everything he loves just crumble and fall around him. All his plans fall apart at the seams. That's basically the message of this song. When it falls is basically Salem saying, I'm going to enjoy watching your plans fall apart around you. It used to feel like a fairy tale, now it seems we were just pretending. We'd fix our world, then we're on our way to a happy ending. Now, now that the fall of Beacon has taken place, everyone is split up. <coughs> um, friends have come and gone. Um, what else? That's basically it for the first verse. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically it for the first verse. Friends have come and gone. Everyone's split up. Uh, the fall of Beacon has happened... They've all seen true hardship at this point in time. And they're just trying to 
recollect themselves and meet up again. Referencing the fall of Beacon right there. Do we just go home? Can we follow through? When all hope is gone, there's something we can do. Let's just live. Again, reinforcing the message of let's recollect ourselves, let's quote unquote find ourselves and meet up again. Let's just live day by day and not be conquered by our sorrows. The past can hold us down. We must be free. Those lines kind of speak for themselves, actually. There's no hidden, quote-unquote, hidden message in that particular verse. It just really just speaks for itself, now that I think about it. as does the next verse. Every everyone's now met up again, recollected themselves, and so now they're all wanting to um, basically take the fight to the enemy is kind of the message of Volume 5's intro. Bas again, the message of Volume 5's intro is basically We've found ourselves, and now we need to face the enemy head-on. The enemy, of course, being Salem and her. <clears throat> uh, basically, what I take from this first verse is that things are starting to... Uh, that things are starting to look bad. And that folks are hoping for a miracle, basically. Second verse, same as the first. Right now your hopes are shattered, just pointless ever after. But in time you'll find... But in time you'll find through love. 
but in time you'll find through love your power just shines. Basically, what that verse means is that things may look bad now, but just keep on, as Monty, as Monty always said, keep moving forward and things will turn out okay in the end. And here we are at the most recent volumes intro, volume 8. Now, before I continue on, I'm honestly going to need to look up the lyrics for this one, because... I still haven't quite picked everything out yet. <laughs> okay, here we go. We said goodbye to all the things we loved, gave up our lives just to find that it was not enough. What that first means to me is that things are just really looking bad. And everything that everything that Ruby and Co have tried thus far just hasn't worked. We leapt in faith, left our solitude, our carefree peace. What we thought could change the world was just a childish dream. What that means, in my eyes, is that we tried everything we could think of, but so far nothing's been working. Just nothing at all has been working. <clears throat> We failed to stop our own demise. The tragic ends before our eyes. Hope has no place here. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. At this point, Salem's pretty close to winning. I'm not gonna say what all has been happening in volume eight, because spoilers. But if you're fully caught up with Volume 8, if you've seen Volume 8, Chapter 9, which then you'll know that Salem's pretty close to winning, I, I think. Sorry about the bang. 
But yeah, Salem's pretty close to winning. And... At this point, no one knows what to do. Maybe the path that leads our way home will finally clear. Maybe the end we tried to avoid is already here. <sighs> Maybe things will work out in the end. Maybe they won't, and we just don't know it yet. Some roses will never bloom, some dreams will rot on the vine, some lives will end much too soon, some evil will never die. I honestly have nothing to say about that verse. I... I'm not able to discern any hidden meanings from that verse. But maybe you can. If you're able to, let me know down in the comments. For the final verse of the intro to volume 8. Some wars will not end in peace. Some heroes choose the wrong side. Sometimes it's worth it all to risk, th to risk the fall and fight for every life. Some wars won't end in peace. I honestly only see two outcomes to the war with Salem. Either Salem kills everyone and conquers Remnant, or Ruby and friends somehow gather up all the relics and somehow beat Salem. Those are the only two outcomes I see. Right now. And right now, I'd say Salem's pretty close to winning. Beacons destroyed. Haven, while not destroyed, is pretty crippled in terms of available huntsmen and huntresses. Um, we... Okay, I don't know the situation in, um, Vacuo. But if anyone does, then go ahead and, uh, post it down in the comments. Just give me, like, a TLDR of, 
uh, what's going on in Vacuo, if you know. And again, if you're if you're fully caught up with the show, then you'll know what's going on in Atlas right now. Some heroes choose the wrong side. <laughs> I think we all know who that line applies to. <laughs> okay, let me rephrase. If you're caught... Again, if you're caught up with the show, then you know who that line applies to and why that line is worded the way it is. Sometimes it's worth it all to risk the fall and fight for every life. Those last three lines are really self-explanatory. So, I have nothing more to say, really. I mean, I don't. Those, these last three lines are really self-explanatory. Sometimes it is worth it all to save as many people as you can. Happy? Never. Again. <laughs> Happy, uh, happily ever after? Happy. Never again. <laughs> like I said, if you're caught up, you'll know that Salem is pretty close to winning. To... Thoroughly trashing Atlas. Again, I'm not going to say what's going on currently because spoilers. But if you know, you know. And that's the end of the video. But yeah, if you know, you know. And I will leave a link to this video in my video's description. So, if you want, you can watch it at your leisure. But that's going to do it for me tonight. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all tomorrow for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. So until then, stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, wear a mask, be good people, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>